Hello and welcome. Got a fun one for you today. This is a short follow. Uh, we'll see if it turns out to be short. A follow up <laughs> to a video I did the other day on uh, using text wildcards and lambdas and some other fun stuff to solve some uh, problems based on a uh, crossword puzzle. So we looked at things like, you know, how do you find find words that fit this pattern and you know, com how many, find the way that you can complete this grid, or how many ways that you can complete this grid, uh, and we built up to also finding anagrams of words. Uh, if you are interested in that and haven't already seen it, I'll put a link up there, or wherever links go. Um, also, the uh, the workbook with the questions is uh, available online, so I'll put a link to that down below, wherever links to things that aren't videos go. Um, but at the end of that, I said there were this is an originally a, a competition question, and there were three bonus questions to uh, separate the truly hardcore from the merely somewhat hardcore uh, modelers. Uh, and I said I would leave those for later videos, so I'm back today to try and tackle those. So uh, I've got, as I mentioned at the time, two that are two that are pretty hard, and one that is uh, very very hard. Uh, or at least very hard to do in a short period of time. We'll see how long it takes me today. Um, I did uh, pose it as a challenge to see if anybody could do it. Uh, and so at, at the time I'm recording, one person uh, has cracked question 9 and question 10. So congratulations to John Vergara. Uh, I'm hopeful there might even, be, uh, might even be another name or two to add to the Hall of Fame by the time I actually get around to publishing this, which will probably be in another day or so. But anyway, let's dive on in. So uh, I'll just kind of refresh your memory. I'm going to assume you've seen the previous video, but we uh, we made this um, we made this lambda function called d anagram, uh, which basically takes the letters in a word and puts them in alphabetical order. Um, someone pointed out in the comments to the last video that actually you could also do this just by uh, by doing using sequence and mid to split the word into all its letters and then using sort to uh, to sort them in order and concat to put them back together. Uh, and I made a cryptic reference to the fact that I might want the uh, the lambda so that I could do something else with it later, which I'm going to show you now. So first things first, let's just uh, de-anagram this, uh, which we're going to do with, and I've just added a named range A to Z, uh, or Z, Z, whatever, uh, which just has the letters of the alphabet in order, rather than having to keep going back to that cell. So we're going to de-anagram that. So we're looking for a, an expression of three words, a six-letter, three-letter, and seven-letter word that can be made up from this. So first thing I'm going to do is just say six, three, seven. How many words are we talking about? Count ifs, word list, length is this. So if I were to just kind of naively say, well, let's consider all combinations of, uh, of words, then I'd be looking at 64 million different combinations. So that's not going to be great. We're going to need to filter it down a little bit first. So how are we going to filter it down? Well, first, I'm going to start by taking each of the six, three, and seven letter words and seeing which ones have their letters contained in this. And then among those ones, I'll look for, com for, uh, for combinations that could make it up. So I'm going to start in a new tab. I'll just uh, have a Q9 tab. So First of all, I'm going to have my uh, six letter words. So I'm going to say filter word list word, where word list length is six. Uh, and then I'll have the same thing for my uh, three letter words and for my seven letter words. Uh, and now this is where uh, what I was saying about being able to play around with the, well, uh, let me motivate it a little bit first, being able to play around with the lambda. So. Uh, wait, hang on a second. What? Oh, I, I keep doing this. I keep expecting this to be a third argument, but it's not a third argument. I need to put equals. I was wondering why these were not all of length six at all. Uh, whoops, still getting used to dynamic arrays. They're awesome though. Uh, okay, so now I actually have six letter, three letter, and seven letter words. That's better. So, first of all, I'm going to just quickly de anagram these. Uh, nice thing about uh, this is I can apply it to the whole dynamic array. So I'm interested in understanding, are all these letters, A, B, F, L, V, Y, contained in this set of letters, A, C, E, L, da, 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 da. Um, so one way that I can do that is if I were able to, uh, we talked about matching with wildcards, if I were able to put a star in between every pair of different letters, if the uh, the sorted version of the longer word matches this pattern, 
that would mean it contains all those letters. And you know, equally, if I take one that has repeats, if uh, if the longer word matches that pattern, it would mean it has all of these letters and it has at least two Fs and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little tweak to my dianagram function to let me get uh, this string padded out with stars. So let me go back to my advanced formula environment, uh, go back to my, oh, I've got A to Z up there, but I'm going to work on dianagram, uh, make that big, and I'll stretch it out here as well. So I'm going to add a fourth argument. I'll just call it pad, uh, and I'm putting that in uh, in square brackets to show that that's an optional argument because I want it to be backward compatible with all my existing uses where I've left that blank. Uh, and now you can see straight away it's telling me you've got a syntax error, which is down here. My call back to dianagram is missing pad. So I'm going to add that in. Oops, no. PA duration pad, thank you. Um, uh, oh, sorry, it's also complaining because there's comma missing there. So now I do that, I do that, and it's happy. So now how am I going to do this? So my pad in this case is just going to be an asterisk character. So uh, in my base case, I'm just going to put an asterisk at the end. And then in my uh, iterative step um, right in here, where I'm adding to my end string, I'm adding uh, whatever, let's say seven A's, then I'm going to add Let's see if I'm adding that to the end, then I need to add it in here. So I'm going to say and if uh, the number of characters is greater than zero, then I want to add my pad, otherwise add nothing. Uh, and anything else? No, that's it. I hit tick, hit refresh to sync it back into the workbook. Uh, oh, sorry, I must have I've got a bunch of zeros in here now for some reason. Um, number of characters of Jordan zero, then pad. Ah, sorry. Okay, so th this is where I've uh, where I've left pad blank. Uh, it's treating that as a zero instead of an empty string. So I guess if I add a and that to the end of that, that will probably cause it to treat that as, well, maybe it won't. Getting a little closer, uh, I guess. Oh, yes, I just hard coded a star because I was thinking of a star, but I meant to write pad. Okay, so now I think maybe we've got something that'll make sense. Sync it one more time. Okay, so now my existing D anagrams are working as they were before. And if hopefully if I add my optional fourth argument, yes, I'll now get, so you can see there's stars all around, but where there's repeated letters, uh, I, don't, I don't have stars there. So now what I want to do is just figure out uh, whether that pattern matches this. So I'm gonna say uh, count if, uh, this guy here matches that pattern. And now you can see I've got uh, not that many cases where it matches. So I'm going to copy this, put it over there, put it over there. Um, and just, I could then, you know, take a new range to dynamically sort this in, but I'm just going to copy value paste those zeros and ones so that I can sort on them where they are. And then I'll sort, oops, can't, oh, okay, fine, I need to copy value paste this piece as well. Then I will do that, and this piece to be able to sort. So now I'm just gonna take my ones up the top. So let's call this len count match. And that'll just be some. I'll get down to as far as any of them goes, so I can copy that formula across. Do, 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 do. Come on, almost there. All right, that'll do. So then, okay. So now I've got a much more manageable number. I've got 14 six-letter words that are contained, five three-letter words, and 13 seven-letter words. So just a quick check. 
product of those three, 910, which is a very manageable number to get to. So now I'm just going to lay out all the scenarios uh, and put them together. So I think I've showed you this in a previous video. Uh, so I want to count 14, 5, and 13. So I want to you know, just count 2, 3, 4, da, 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 up to 13, and then back to 1, uh, and then you know have 1s all the way along here, and then get to 2 here, then count this up to 13, back to 1, and then have this go to 3, and so on. And so basically, I'm you know in a funny base, I'm counting through all the different possible scenarios. So the way that I do that formulaically uh, is this one. I'm going to say mod this 13 plus 1. So that'll go up to 13 and then back around to 1. And back around to 1 again. And I want this to go down 910 rows. I've got two blank rows at the top. So it's going to go to row 912. So I'll just copy that down there. And it ends at a 13, which is what it's supposed to. And then here I'm going to say if this is less than that, meaning if I've ticked over from a 13 back to a 1, then it's time to tick this up 1. So mod that 5 over the top. Uh, plus 1, otherwise keep that number the same. And that formula will fill out the other two columns, and so I end up at 14, 5, 13, a total of 910 rows, and if I were to copy value paste and remove duplicates, it will tell me no duplicate values found. So that's just a quick check to make sure that I do actually have all the scenarios. Uh, and I guess I'm just going to, just for the sake of being vaguely proper about it, I'll color those in. Uh, and I will make that a different color because it's a different formula. Okay, so then uh, my, well then I just want to do a check, right? So I'm going to say equals index on this list, this number, and index on this list, this number, and index on X. Yeah, you know what? I'm slightly regretting doing it this exact way. So I'm gonna. I, I will actually split this out into three cells because then it'll make it easier for me to find my results at the end. So um, yes, drop the end. That's fine. Uh, and here. Okay. So uh, this is word one, word two, and word three. And I just copy that down. So now I've got a table of all 910 possible combinations of uh, words that are each individually contained in this. And now I just have to figure out which one of those is collectively contained in that. And so how am I going to do that? I'm going to put them all together and then de-anagram them. So I'm going to de-anagram this and this and this. See, that's that's an old Excel habit. I'm going to de-anagram concat that because we don't need to do and, and, and anymore. Uh, starting from zero, my string is going to be A to Z. Uh, I'll leave out the last argument. And then I'm just going to say, is that equal to this? And then hopefully I can come and let's do it here. Filter this list of words where this is true. Uh, no, maybe I need to say equals true. No, that's not working. Why is that not working? Hmm. I don't know what I've done to anger that actually. Oh, oh dear, that's saying it's no matches. Whoops, must have stuffed something up there. Let's take another quick look. So, got all the different words there, all the different words there, all the different words there. Okay, might need to edit this bit of the video out, because that's not a good start. Ah, okay. Stupid. Didn't lock in the absolute reference. All right. Not as big a thing as I thought. So now, there we go, there's my three words. Uh, so I'll just put them in here where they're a little easier to read. And you can quickly uh, check that there is indeed only one match. Okay.
So that is that one uh, with a minor fluff up in the middle, but there we go. And then the other two are connected. So question 10 in the below grid, uh, if this yellow clue is an anagram of this, then there's only one possible word that can go in this blue clue, no matter what goes in two, four, and one, as long as it fits. So first thing, obviously, we need to uh, we need to de-anagram this. So we'll do it the same way we did before. We'll de-anagram it uh, with A to Z. Uh, and then we'll look that up in word list de-anagrammed and return from word list word. So again, if you didn't see the previous video, just a reminder, uh, you know, this is the list of all the words, and then I've used my de-anagram to put all of those in, in alphabetical order. So I just put this in alphabetical order, look it up, and then this is the word that actually fits. So this is my 13-letter uh, word. I'm interested in the fourth, sixth, and eighth letters, which are the ones that are at the intersection. So let me just say mid of this, uh, four, six, and eight, and one. Um, now, there are, there are uh, a lot of different ways that you can think about getting from, you know, given the word here, or what are the possible words here. Uh, I'm going to show you one specifically for tackling question 10, and then I'm going to show you another couple of ones for the more general uh, question 11. But first I'll do one that maybe doesn't generalize as well, but that's why I'll do it separately for question 10. So, uh, let's see, uh, this is the... Just move this down so I have a little more space. So uh, this is the let's say letter one. Uh, location one is so on uh, this word it is the fourth letter. Uh, on this word it's the middle word it's the first letter and on this word it's the fifth letter. Uh, and then I don't know why that is in a different place. Then location two. Uh, so where the second intersection is, is one, two, three, four letters later for each one. So let's do that plus four. Uh, again, I've got some formatting weirdness going on here. I'm just going to do that so I don't have to keep doing that. Uh, okay, so then I want the length of the word. Uh, so the word two is 12. That's five. And this one is, oops, that one is 15. So 12, five. And 15. And is there anything else I need? No, I don't think so. Uh, so the question I want to ask myself is, um, what are the possible letters here, given that, let's say, there's, given there's a Y here, what are the possible letters that can come here? Uh, given that there's a B here, what are the possible letters that can come here? Given there's an F here, what are the possible letters that can come here? So how am I going to do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to use let because there's going to be a multi-step process. So uh, I'll call it words by length, uh, and I'm going to that's going to be filter word list word, where word list length equals this. So that's my words by length, and then I'm going to filter that again. Uh, filter words by length, where what do I want to say? I want to say where the uh, fourth letter is a Y. Uh, so mid, words by length, four, one equals Y. Uh, and then I'll just drop that out first. I'm going to do some more work with it later, but okay, so you can see there's 31 possible words that match there. Then of those, uh, let me expand this formula bar out a little so we can play around some more. So of those, I would like to say, give me mid of that. I'm interested now in position eight, one. Uh, I probably put my brackets in the wrong place. Oh, no, there, never mind. I don't know what that error said, but it doesn't seem to have troubled it too much. Uh, so these are now all the uh, letters in position eight of those 31 words uh, that can go there. And then I'd like to get unique of that. So what are, so these, in this case, there are 11 possible letters that can appear here, given that a Y appears here. Uh, and so then I'm just going to uh, apparently transpose that so that I can get it going across. And then I copy that down. 
and that gives me the same thing for the middle word and for the last word. So you'll see there's only three possible letters that can go here, F, Q, and Z slash C, and there are eight possible ones that can go across here. Uh, so I'll just quickly say, oops, columns of this hash. Just again, a sense check to see, do I have a reasonable number of things to check? And it's just 264 cases, so I do. Uh, so let me throw in a new sheet, I'll call it Q10. Uh, and again, here I want to just copy over that same kind of counting logic as before. So I'll just come over here where I had it uh, and take this. Uh, let's see, are these pointing at? No, sorry. Just need to copy that format up there. And so now these are pointing where they're supposed to be, and then I want 264 rows. There's two blank rows, so I want to go down to 266. Copy all that down, and that gets me down to 1138, which is where it's supposed to be. And again, one more quick sense check, just copy value, paste those. No repeats, and so that tells me I've got everything working there. So now my letters, uh, I'll just call it letter, uh, let's, yeah, letter one, letter two, letter three, and uh, it's going to be index, and let's do it this way. So in other words, my first candidate letter uh, is Q. And then copy that across and just point the reference down one. Copy it across again and point the reference down one more. Uh, so now my question is, which of these is a possible match? So uh, let me just say, the pattern that I need to fit is that I've got letter one, blank, letter two, blank, letter three. So in other words, the pattern here is going to be this, and oops, question mark, and this, and question mark, and this. Uh, I guess I could probably use a smart text join, given that there's exactly one question mark in between. But anyway, so now I'm going to say count ifs, word list, word, that, And hopefully the answer should be yes, there is exactly exactly one match, which is that pattern in ZP. So now I can just bring it back in here. Uh, so I can say uh, xlookup one in, actually, let me say filter, because then it would work if there were more. Uh, filter that where this uh, is greater than zero gives me that, and then I want to turn that into a word, so I'm going to x look up this uh, in word list word, returning from word list word, where my match type is wildcard. And that gives me the answer, which is npzvp. So that is the only word that can go in there while f is the one uh, above it. So then, Question 11 is the, the more general version of this. So there, basically question 11 is sort of getting at what I was thinking about as I wrote this question, which is, you know, I was thinking, okay, so I, I want to find a grid that's, you know, a little more complicated than this, you know, simple two crossings where there is, you know, something uniquely defined. But I had to find it, right? Like I, this, you know, this word to put in didn't just come to me in a dream. And so the more general question I'm asking down here is, given the grid, what words could you put in here that would result in a unique word down here? And specifically, the question says, there is, aside from this one, there is exactly one other word that has that property. But, you know, even if you, if you take that away, uh, you know, we're basically going to have to test the words that we could put in here and try to figure out, um, try to figure out how many corresponding possibilities there are down here and then sort of filter that. So that's why this method here, you know, if you, uh, if you spend some time, you know, making a sort of dynamic array version of this that could resize according to, 
you know, whether it was 1138 or something else, then this method could be generalized to tackle that, but it's the least suitable for that, which is why uh, which is why I use that one to tackle question 10 as a standalone. So let me show you, uh, I'll, I'll walk you through one other method and then I'll kind of wave my hand generally at uh, another, in my opinion, even better method, but I'm not going to uh, spend all the time on that one. So uh, in this case, we, we started off by saying, okay, you know, given the words going down, what are the possible letters here? And then for each combination of letters, is there a word that matches? The other way that you can flip that around is to just start with the possible words here uh, and the possible words here and say, are there vertical words that would match that pair? Uh, and that's, that's the sort of heart of this version of the solution uh, to this question. So what does that mean? Uh, Q11. Uh, so what I'm going to basically lay out is a grid of all the five letter words along the top uh, that could be uh, the blue word and all the 13 letter words down the side that could be the yellow word. Uh, and then we're going to figure out the corresponding patterns for the three vertical words and figure out how many of those there are. So having said that, let's do it quickly. Filter word list word uh, where word list length equals five. So that's all my five letter words. And then I want positions one, three, and five from that. So I'm gonna say mid of this, uh, lock in the row, and then hash. This, lock in the column, uh, and then one. So those are my three uh, my three letters that I need from there. And then, let's see, I need another couple of columns here. So I'm gonna want positions four, six, and eight from my, oops, filter equals filter word list word where word list length equals 13 uh, I'll widen out to fit that and then I'm going to say equals mid of this lock in the column and then dynamic uh, in this comma one and then we copy that across and so then my question is going to be you know for each intersection of you know one of these rows and one of these columns uh, does there exist a word that you know matches these three patterns? Uh, and so to, to help me along with that and, and make it not too calc intense, I'm going to also need to have on hand a list of, let's see, 12 letter words, 15 letter words. I've already got the five letter words up the top. So 12, 15, uh, filter, word list, word, where word list length equals this, copy that across. And then I'm going to say, so let me just refresh my memory. So for this word, it's the fourth and the eighth position. So I'm going to say count ifs, word list, uh, sorry, not the whole word list. Uh, so I'm interested in 12 letter words specifically. Uh, so among the 12 letter words, uh, you could go and count on the whole thing because the pattern I'm going to generate is 12 characters long, but, uh, well, but that's going to be less efficient uh, because you'd be counting on 10,000 instead of on whatever a couple hundred here. So uh, the pattern I want to match is, uh, so, oops, no, don't accept the correction, go away. Uh, the pattern I want to match is three blanks, then the first letter from uh, the yellow word, then three blanks, the first letter from the blue one, and then four blanks. So blank, 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 and uh, the first letter from the blue word, which is this one over here, yeah, because I've been off the sheet now, it's trying to put that in. I don't like that. Uh, and three more blanks and uh, H dollar three uh, and four more blanks. And so I can see there is zero there, but as I uh, copy across, I've got some matches later on. Anyway, don't need to flip through them all. So that is checking the first word, and then I'm just going to multiply this by checking the second word and checking the third word, because I'm just interested in do all three of them exist? And so, you know, if any of them is zero, then you multiply them together, the, the product zero is out. Uh, and all I'm interested in then is, you know, is it zero or not zero? So uh, for the second word, uh, I'm going to be counting the five letter words, which is uh, rather than A8, it's going to be this guy up here h2 with a hash and then in this case there's nothing before the first intersection and then instead of being e it'll be f so this, this is the second 
uh, intersection there. Uh, instead of H3, it'll be H4. And again, nothing after the second intersection. So that's the pattern. So in other words, I want to go Y, three blanks, and then an A in this case, or A, three blanks, and then a B, and so on. And then for the last word, uh, I want to count on column B, which is the 15 letter words. Uh, and there's, I think, I think there's one more character before and two more characters after in the pattern. So let's see, we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six there. So let's just quickly check. Four at the start, yes, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, six at the end, good. Okay, so then I copy that across. And I copy it down, and this is where, uh, well, this is where we have to stop and wait a second, but not actually as long as I thought we might have to. So I, I remember, uh, I remember doing some kind of weird thing with a pivot table when I first did this a few years ago to try to make it more uh, sort of calc efficient, but that actually ran in a few seconds, no problem. Uh, so I don't know if that's just because I have a better computer these days. I know they've done some kind of calculation optimization in Excel, or maybe I was just doing it wrong before, or maybe I'm misremembering, I don't know. But anyway, uh, that for, you know, a total of almost a million calculations, each one, you know, checking patterns against lists of hundreds of things in a few different ways seemed pretty efficient to me. So now I just want to see uh, how many matches. Count matches. Horrible to insert a column in there, but even that it took pretty much in its stride. Uh, and here I'm just going to say count if this range is greater, oops, greater than zero. And then I can kind of filter here, and I'm in, whoa, oh, no ones. That's not good. That means I've stuffed something up again. Oh, disappointing, disappointing. Uh, all right, let's have a quick debug check. This is going to be the argument in favor of the last method I'm going to show you in a minute, but never mind. So I'm counting the 12 letter words that are three and, uh, oh, okay, sorry, yeah, these, that's the answer, uh, in the last word. So in the second word, I moved from F8 to G8, and from I3 to I4, but in the third word, I did not, so I should have gone F, G, H, and I345. Uh, so put it another way, you can see I was not referring to these two cells, which I should have been. Okay, so now I'll just recalc it again, uh, and hopefully it'll be as quick the second time. Uh, Maybe I've made it mad. No, it doesn't seem to be mad. Just taking a second. And if this has worked, then when I come back and reapply the filter, I should find that there are two ones. And sure enough, there are. And so that's this one here is the uh, is the first word. Let me just copy it, value paste it next to here, and you can see. Uh, oh, it's recalculating everything while I value paste. Okay, I better. Just turn off calculations for the last little bit. Uh, so, there I put it there, and you can see, okay, so that one matches that one. And so the other one here, semrstvgraph, is the answer to the bonus question. Uh, so that is one way to do it. Like I said, you could, uh, if you're clever about it, uh, adapt the way that I did question 10 to also um, you know, flex the size of the dynamic array, and then you could data table that or, uh, or kind of expand it other ways. Um, but the other way, and the way that I did it at the time and that, uh, that I found more elegant in a lot of ways, uh, is to do it in Power Query. Um, so this is, I'll show you quickly how I made the query, but this is the output of the query. Uh, so I basically said for all possible word threes, so let me just pull this uh, sheet over to me next to this one. So for all possible word threes, uh, tell me how many possible words are there uh, for word five, for this one here. Um, how many different combinations are there? In other words, all the different ways that you could do the three vertical words to make it fit. So here it's telling me, you know, the, the two that have only one possible word are these two, and these, these are the unique uh, word fives. Uh, and this is like an example of uh, word one, word two, word three, uh, sorry, word one, word two, word four, that would complete the grid. Um, so the way I've set it up is basically, 
uh, you know, if there's more than one, then it just gives me two possible words. Uh, the reason I did it this way is basically I'm imagining if somebody said to me, oh, you know, you found this word, but how do you know some other word doesn't work? And they say, you know, how about for then you could go and look it up in this table and say, okay, well, here are two words that you could put in, uh, well, you know, basically two sets of words that you could use to complete the grid. Here's word five, word one, word two, word four. Um, and so that kind of proves that's not unique. Um, so let me uh, sort of quickly show you how I did that. Uh, data, where, oh, I'm, don't know how to, there it is. Uh, okay, so, I've got two uh, two pieces to this. Um, I'll show you the, the main piece first. So uh, I'm going to have to shrink this so it fits in the in the right corner of my screen. There we go. All right. So here I've got the the different steps in my query. So the first step is I just grab uh, you know word one, uh, which is the um, sorry. Let me just go back because I've got. The, the numbering here is kind of based on crossword convention. So, you know, right to left, top to bottom. So this is word one, this is word two, this is word three, this is word four, this is word five. Uh, and I just basically thought of these uh, intersections as, you know, this is intersection one, intersection two, intersection three, four, five, and six. Uh, so then let me open this back up. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm basically generating a table that is, you know, here's all the possible words of length, whatever 15 that word one is, uh, and here is the letter that is in the position intersection three and the letter that's in the position intersection six. Here's the same thing for word two, which goes through intersection uh, one and four. So whatever word two was the one that had the fourth and the eighth position. So we should be able to see, well, it's got a bunch of A's, but let's look at this one, A, B, A, C. So the fourth letter is C, goes there, and then B, V, F, B. So B is the the eighth letter that goes there. And you do that for each word. I'll show you how I got that in a minute. Uh, you can do it in a pretty manual way or you can uh, you can do it a different way. And then basically what you do is you merge each of these together. So in other words, you can merge. So word two has uh, intersection one, word three has intersection one. So you can merge the two tables on that field. And when you expand it, you get a table of all the possible, you know, here's all the possible word twos that have a corresponding word three. And if you do an inner join, it basically drops anything where, like for example, if there's no uh, if there's no 12 letter word whose fourth letter is an M, then you know anything where intersection one is supposed to be an M will get dropped automatically. Uh, and then you know you merge that again uh, with word four on intersection two and expand that out. You merge it again with uh, word one on intersection three and you expand that out. Um, and then finally you merge uh, all of those with word five on intersections four, five, and six. And then, you know, that's where the constraint starts to come in and the list shrinks. And you get, you end up with a table of like, here are all the possible combinations of word two, word three, word four, word one, word five, and the six different intersections. And then you group that up uh, by all the possible combinations of word three and word five. And then you count, you know, how many of, how many, uh, different ways to fill the grid are there where this is word three and this is word five. Um, and then, you know, you take one example. So in the, I'm using list.first to take just one example of uh, a word two, a word one, two, and four that would put those together. And then you group again to group it up uh, just by word three. And then you count the possible uh, number of word fives. You count the total number of combinations, which is all the ways you can fill the grid where this is word three. And then you pull in you know, one uh, one sample of uh, five, which is text.combine, take the first two, um, and then the corresponding samples of words one, two, and four, and then you just sort that, and there you get your, your lovely table. And the like I said, with this, you can just kind of manually say, okay, give me, um, you know, take the, the word list, filter to where the length is 15, and then split out, uh, you know, I3 and I6 being certain characters. But the way I did it, uh, I wrote a helper function for it. So you see I'm, here I'm saying word getter. So get me a word that's 15 letters long named word one that has intersections of positions five and nine, which are named I3 and I6. And then, you know, to get word two, to get word three, to get word four, 
you do basically the same, I'm sorry to get word five, you do basically the same thing. So, you know, word five is five letters long, has intersections of positions one, three, and five, and those are intersection four, intersection five, and intersection six. Um, and the nice thing about this is, you know, if I go into the advanced editor, if I change the grid, so like when I was writing this original question, you know, I tried some grids, they didn't work, so then I tried some other grids, I can basically change all the settings in here. Uh, for you know the length of words and and other things, and then refresh the query quite quickly. Uh, so I'll just very very quickly show you uh, Word Getter. Um, that is so you're just giving it, you give it the word length, the word name, the uh, locations of the intersections, and the names of the intersections. So it says source is the table in the current workbook called Word List. Uh, you filter where the length is equal to the word len parameter. Uh, you remove all the columns except word, uh, and then this is a fun bit, you know, list.accumulate basically lets you iterate over these two lists. Uh, obviously they need to be the same length. Um, so it just says, you know, go from zero to uh, the number of elements in this list minus one, because Power Query does zero based indexing. That's one thing that's hard to get used to if you're used to in grid Excel where everything indexes from one, but never mind. And basically what that's saying is at each stage you add a column, uh, whose name is the next uh, intersection name on the list and whose value is the uh, the next location again minus one because your uh, you know position zero is the first letter position five is the sixth letter um, but it basically takes so you know if, where I had um, you know locations were five and nine and the na names were I3 and I6. It says add a column called I3, which is the fifth character, and add a column called I6, which is the uh, ninth character. And then it just renames the word column to, you know, W1 or, or whatever. Uh, and then you take that, you put it in here, uh, and you run. And it, it takes, um, you know, similar to the other one, it takes sort of 10 seconds or so to refresh. But the nice thing about this one, like you saw that, uh, you know, my performance was taking a bit of a hit with all the uh, all the calculations live. And so I had to turn uh, automatic calculations off for a minute there. Um, the nice thing about this is you've got all your audit trail, just like having a live formula, except you only refresh it when you want to. And, you know, this is more or less static data unless you go and change the, the parameters. And so, you know, you've got something that is both live and not calculation intense, which is uh, which is a big plus. Um, and yeah, there it goes. It has finished loading. All right. So yeah, that was uh, that was probably a little bit on the intense side. Uh, I know. Uh, you know, there's a bit of a divide in my audience between the sort of super wizards who like to see, you know, only uh, are only interested if I'm doing the impossible uh, and people who are, you know, learning new things and, and want to see me take it from the basics. Uh, this uh, <laughs> this video was obviously targeted at the super wizards, but, you know, I'm sure I'll have uh, I'll sure, I'm sure I'll have something a little bit more approachable coming up soon. All right. That's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.